Greetings, salutations, all those nice things. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mr. Athide. And today's episode, math! We have looked at sums of differences, sums and differences of functions graphically. We've looked at them algebraically. We've also looked at algebraic products and quotients of functions. Now we're going to look at products and quotients again, but from a graphical point of view. In terms of how we proceed, in terms of how we actually go through this, it works very similarly to taking sums and differences of functions graphically. We kind of go point by point, scan through this left to right, and see what values we get. Sometimes we'll get things that fall right off the graph and we can't actually plot them, but we look for stuff that can work. Personally, when I'm taking the product, I look for zeros because I know that zero times anything is going to be zero. I also look for where one of the functions is one or negative one, like all the things that are easy to multiply by. I'm not saying that multiplying by two is hard. I'm just saying that multiplying by one is way easier and multiplying by zero is even easier than that. Why wouldn't I go for that? Looking at these. I have to graph their product function. Okay, I'll start with a zero. So when x is negative three, for example, g of x is zero, f of x is negative four, the product of those, unless I'm very much mistaken, and I was mistaken once in my life, haven't been since. Anyways, that's zero. And similarly, when x is one, f is zero, g is negative four, product of that is also zero. And you look for other points as well. For example, when x is, I don't know, zero, we've got negative one times negative three, which is three. When x is negative two, we have negative one times negative three, which is also three. So we go through this, we find as many points as we can. For example, when x is negative one, I've got negative two times negative two, which is four, and then going a little bit further, ooh, I see some symmetry happening, this is fun. Anyways, one times negative five is these days negative five. We find the points we can, and as we have done previously, we play connect the dots. While a line plus a line would give you a line, a line being multiplied by a line, woo baby, that gives us a parabola. So this is not a, like a some sort of polygonal thing. Ugh, ugh. This stuff is nightmares right here. But this will be a smooth curve. You don't draw this in one swoop. It might be, it might be a screw that out. You're playing with eraser. Sketchy lines. Sketchy lines are where it's at when you're drawing curves. Boom. One side done. It's a work of art. Math is beautiful. Don't you dare let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Ta-da! So that's a little bit of multiplication. When we divide, there's stuff to keep in mind. For example, we cannot divide by zero. G of x is zero over there. When x is negative three, g of x is zero. And if we're taking f divided by g, we can't divide, we can't divide by that value. We, we can't have a value there, it's, it's bad, it's scary. It's some scary stuff. So at that point, we do need to have a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote when x is negative three because at negative three, g of x is zero. g of x is what we're dividing by and we can't divide by zero. 
we can still look for nice points that work for us. So f is in the numerator of this whole thing. So when f is 0, well, then, then we just get a 0. Thanks, f, for being there for us. You rock. G of x, you watch yourself. Beyond that, things proceed basically the same. We'll take the value of f of x. We'll divide by the value of g of x. Do be cautious as to which one is f, which one is g. It can be very easy to get them mixed around and be like, ah, yes, f is here, g is here, and then somewhere on the left be like, ah, yes, f is here, g is there. That's a mistake. So just be aware of what's being divided by what. Keep track of those things. Follow them along. Color code if you want, but make sure it's the right order because 2 divided by 1 is different from 1 divided by 2. Do you know, do you feel, to dig? Excellent. Anyways, I'm going to rock through this. Like, oh, I don't know, over here. F is negative 5. G is 1. Negative 5 divided by 1 is like negative 5-ish. If we're a little bit further to the left the left. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And we could go for, I mean, this line goes on forever, right? Even though this grid only goes to like, what, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I know there's an 8 over here. An 8 divided by 4 can give me a 2 if I really, really want that. Anyways. That's that side. Let's get some values on the other side of this asymptote as well. For example, we have negative 3 divided by negative 1. Ooh, that's, that's positive 3. And then we have, just next to it, negative 2 divided by negative 2. Ooh, that's 1. We can keep going with this if we want. There's going to be fractional values popping up, but you can get something out of it. Like, I don't know. Here we have, I, I don't know values anymore. This is like three divided by negative seven. So it's, like near a half ish it's not quite a half but you know it's it's in that neighborhood oh you know what's closer to that is actually what would the next one be is literally negative one half classic classic anyways we play connect the dots Again, curve lines, curve lines, curves. That's one side of it. Note the trend towards the asymptote. It is a guiding line. It says, hey, follow me. Just like over here, we're in positive land. And it's saying, hey, follow me. I'm an asymptote. I will lead you to good things. One thing that we haven't really talked about yet in our course is horizontal asymptotes. We've seen it with like exponential functions. In this case, this is what's known as a rational function. We haven't talked about that yet. This thing does have uh, a horizontal asymptote across here. We haven't seen quite how to get that yet. We will in a future unit when we talk about rational functions specifically. But for now, this will do. This is this graph complete. Cool beans. Wicked. There are two more to try. Uh, two more, well, we have the graph of f and g, and you're asked to find the product graph and the quotient graph. 
I'm gonna go right into them momentarily. Feel free to pause the video, try them on your own first, see what happens compared to what I get. Make sure the same, same. Also, don't forget the value of Desmos. Like as you're, as you're doing your own work, as you're doing your uh, graphing and things, use the Desmos graphing calculator. It's super helpful. In fact, nah, I'll do this example first, then I'll show you what that looks like on, on Desmos, just for funsies. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -da. <gasps> they tried to trick us. This one goes on forever. This one ends. There must be a restricted domain. So we've got a firm cutoff. Nothing exists beyond this. Run that, multiplying things together. All right. Negative two times three is that. Um, I guess I can get this one. This is like two and a half. And that's negative one. So negative two and a half. Worth noting, I'm not guessing that it's two and a half. I'm not just saying, eh, I'm eyeballing that is two and a half. Like I'm looking at this saying, this has a slope of one half, right? This line going way back a couple of years into linear relations. So I know that one unit over, it's at a halfway point. It's not like guessing this value or this value and be like, oh, maybe that's a half, maybe that's a third. No, 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 no. We're, we're not eyeballing things on radical functions. Lin linear relations, yeah, we've got a bit of leeway. Any poops. Taking values, I can spot. I can spot stuff here on zero times one. So we think that's zero. Over here, we've got zero times something. I don't know what the something is, but it's a real number. So there's that. And anything else I can get out of this? Sure. This is negative one and a half. This is one. So there's that point too. Again, we're playing connect the dots here. This is a firm endpoint. There's no arrow at that end because things get cut off there. If a radical function, or at least looks like it's a radical function, it's a radical function, stops there, so nothing exists to the left of that point. Beyond that, we're going to kind of cut up through these points here. Oh, what happens here? Does it just level off? Does it go up? Does it go down? We've got in that region positive times positive. So we know this whole function has to be positive. It's gonna be tiny. I mean, they're less than one. Here's one. Here's something less than one times something less than one. It's, it's a little minuscule thing, but it still, still for sure goes up. And then we go back the other way. So we can reach this other known point. This end has an arrow because both functions have an arrow on the right hand side. And that's that. Just for the fanzies. Let's see what this does look like in Desmos. Desmos, where are you? Found you. That radical function is what? Six left? Where's F? Six left, six left, one, two, three, six, neat. Two down, the other function is just negative half x. Oops, equal signs, how do they work? And if we look at their product, Mm -hmm. Oops. Times g of x. There it is. So the original graphs. Boom, boom. And then the product. Kind of as we drew it. It's beautiful. 
Oh, no way. That's an exact value right over there. No, there's no way that's an exact value. Our last example. Um, how do you work this? This has a quotient function involved. So don't forget. That means an asymptote could occur if g of x is ever equal to 0. g of x is equal to 0. Right there. So if we're dividing by g of x, that will cause a vertical asymptote. Do draw it in. Do label it. It exists. We have to acknowledge it. And we'll find as many points as we possibly can. It's a little bit tougher because of the values involved, but we do what we can. Over here, for example, f is negative 2, g is 3. So we've got a value of negative 2 thirds. Not the prettiest thing in the world to try and plot, but It's kind of like there. What else could we possibly get? Well, over here, f of x is 0. 0 divided by any non-zero real number is 0. OK, so we can get that. Anything else we can get? Not really a whole lot, but we can maybe attempt this one f of x is 1, g of x is negative 1.5, which is really like 1 divided by 3 halves. Well, that's just 2 thirds again. So, okay, when x is 3, we're back at this 2 thirds business. Neat. Not a lot of info to go on. How do we actually turn this into the graph? How do we know if we're positive, if we're negative? Which way to trend? Does this go down here? Does it go up here? Literally nobody knows. Just kidding. We know. For example, up until the, that zero, up until here, f of x is negative, g of x is positive, negative divided by positive is negative. So that all connects. Hooray, hooray, huzzah. This one actually has a little upper loopy lip before it actually starts going up. It's kind of cute. But it starts going up. And in this section here, both of those are positive. Both f and g are positive. Therefore, f divided by g must also be positive. So this actually just goes and continues up, 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 up. So it's not going down to the asymptote, it's going up to the asymptote only because we know that the whole thing is positive. That's how we know that. But like over here, well, g of x is negative this whole time. f of x is positive this whole time. Positive divided by negative must be negative. So in this whole region, we know we have to be negative. Like it cannot be in this positive area. So based on that and that alone, we're going to say that it trends to the asymptote over there. What does it do on the positive side of things? Well, this is going down forever. This is going up forever, but at a decreasing rate, curves kind of flattening. So this, this actually does have a horizontal asymptote too, which again, we'll, we'll tackle in like a future day. But that's how this one ends up. Check it on Desmos if you want. Just make sure you can see that shape exactly as it's supposed to be. But try out all this stuff. Whoa, just questions two to three and C3. 
that's not that much at all. But just for funsies, try, try this one, x times sine x. It's a pretty graph. It's probably one of my favorite graphs of all time. I don't even know what I just said in the last 30 seconds, but do the product of those two functions. It's, it's just glorious. Pro tip, just make sure that, how you say, that your horizontal and vertical scales are kind of using the same tick mark is what I'd recommend. And that's all that. See what you got. Um, that concludes all the sums, differences, products, and quotients of functions. One topic left in the next video, which will conclude the unit. But trial is practice. Let me know if you have questions, and I will see you in the future. Goodbye. Stop.